Hi, one more time. Um, the presentation will be for building uh, Debian-based system uh, images, and the speaker will be Ben. So, hope uh, you'll enjoy it, and thank you. Uh, well, this isn't really a presentation, it's a boff. Uh, okay. So, and I don't really have any uh, huge experience with building, uh, building Debian images. Uh, I just know that there's uh, there are a lot of different tools uh, quite a bit of work going on to to develop those tools, and uh, I thought this would be. Uh, I can see that there's a lot of people interested, so uh, hopefully, uh, you some of you have uh, tips and uh, recommendations for you know what's what are the pros and cons of different tools. Um, what uh, what improvements you uh, would like to see uh, in the tools that you use, uh, and so on. So I'll uh, I'll start a Gobi document. Um, uh, if I can remember where, where do I need to go, gobi.debian.net, right? Mm, yeah. Go with Debian.org, okay. Debian. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's not working either. I wonder why not. Okay, yeah. So, uh, right, it's not mirrored yet. Oh, that's not actually working, is it? Hmm. Okay. Well, I can't even get to that display, so that's not going to work. Oh, no, it works. Okay, would anyone like to start off by advocating for their favorite tool that they think not, uh, not enough people are using? And do I have a microphone to give? Oh, you've got a microphone, yeah. I, uh, so Enrico Zini, uh, uh, is uh, giving another talk that, that conflicted with this one, and he asked me to mention that uh, he's working on an update to, uh, he has worked on an update to Live Wrapper that, that removes the dependency on uh, VM to bootstrap, uh, which uh, you may have seen is about to be removed uh, from the archive. Uh, so that m might continue to be an option. Hello. 
Hello. I maintain a Golang application that builds images. It's called the Boss. Someone adding, thank you. It's listed in the system build tools. Uh, we created this at Collabora for hand creating our own images. It's basically uh, infrastructure, and then you just describe your images in a YAML file. So all the data, you, ha you can uh, specify actions, like you can run the bootstrap to create uh, the initial file system, and then on that you can add repositories and install extra packages and do whatever tweaks you need to do. You can get a binary file and flash it so on the uh, offset that you need for bootloaders. So you are able to generate an image that later you can flash on an SD card and mm -hmm. boot on a target device, something like that. I guess it, might, it could also accommodate uh, cloud images maybe, but I, I'm not sure what the exactly requirements are for cloud images. And uh, I'm not sure what other kind of images we might need. But I mean, people want to have a, have a look. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm far from an expert in it, but does it this sound? Yeah. OK. I'm far from an expert in it, but I've been uh, working a bit with uh, VMDB2, which is, uh, well, by the same author as uh, VMD Bootstrap by uh, Lars. And uh, it's also based on a YAML description of the, of the desired uh, uh, system. I have found it to be, well, really easy and, uh, like, uh, expressive. But uh, again, I'm just getting to know it. Uh, any more? Uh, any more tools not mentioned that people would like to uh, advocate for? Uh, Joey has his propeller tool that he did a talk about at DevConf last year is configuration management, but you can just tell it this host that you're already configuring, please make an image that has all the properties that that host has, which is quite nice. So FAI is used by the Debian cloud team and it can do a lot of things. So I think since they are, it's very major, uh, I think I do this since 18 years and we have a lot of experiences and it works in a lot of uh, cases. And it can also do uh, disk images or change root environments and so on. There's a tool called DebEarth that can put a whole system in an in a ramifus. Um, that can be useful at times. Mm -hmm. Since no one else is talking, I'll put a plug on my talk on Thursday, which will be about using FAI for building disk images on ARM systems. So I will probably talk more about it here now, but welcome on Thursday.
Steve, would you like to talk about the uh, the uh, more about the Debian Cloud uh, uh, build process? What's uh, so which Debian Cloud build process? <laughs> So at the moment, there's a, there's a whole slew of things. We've got people that were using um, Bootstrap VZ. Um, I think that, as far as I understand, um, development of that has basically stopped, but some people are probably still using it. We're not. Um, a number of people have moved over to using, uh, using Phi, as Thomas said. Um, so he added support for building images uh, about oh, 18 months ago. Yeah. Um, and so the current uh, images that are happening on AWS are built using that. Google are still using, I think, Bootstrap VZ for what they're using for official images, but people are working on moving over to, uh, to Fi as well. Um, for the Azure images, um, the folks at Creditive are, are doing those. They were using a fork, um, or like a few changes on top of Zigo's um, OpenStack build script. Um, and of course, we're still using that OpenStack build script for the OpenStack images we build regularly. So yes, we have every tool going. <laughs> Um, we have consensus in the cloud team that we want to move everything over to using Phi. Um, the main thing, reason for that is we want to get a, con a consistent base um, configuration that we can use because obviously most of the cloud images that we're building are 99% the same. You know, we're just making tiny tweaks for one p provider or another, and Phi lets us do that in a much more sane fashion. Um, so we can then just check in the configuration, and you know, obviously things can then derive from you know a core set of classes. Um, it seems to work very well. We're still working on actually automating all of this with CI and stuff, but that's where we're up to. So I have just added the packer. I'm the maintainer. So uh, packer is to create uh, VM images for multiply platforms such as uh, Amazon, uh, Google Cloud, or other cloud providers, or even um, background uh, and uh, and uh, uh, I think it's also okay to uh, create uh, VM images for OpenStack. Has anyone done a comparison of several of these tools and could explain why, uh, uh, what, what they chose in the end, why, uh, why it worked better for their, uh, their use case? So we had a need to build Debian images, and uh, we were using Linaro, uh, the way Linaro was building images. So the way they created, they were creating what they call OSPAC, which is the general applications, the user land, uh, created as a tarball, and that was using live build, which was uh, deprecated a few years ago. And then they had Linaro image tools, which was creating a hardware pack, which was all the hardware specifics components in a separated uh, tarball. And then, well, tarball or image format, so it was some, some packages there. And then it was mixing the hardware enablement with the user land, so it could as, as a scale to generate several different images. But since live build, 
uh, got unmaintained, um, we were looking at other options. So we're looking BM debootstrap, which it was missing some of the features that light build had that we could not, I think we could not include. It was not easy to, to add customizations that we had to do with this tool. So it was not, not good enough. Then uh, the bootstrap be set with just some Python script, very uh, running command sequentially and generating an image at the end so you, we could not add and remove and add, add or customizations either and it spits out only one image while we probably need to generate multiple images uh, with different characteristics and we don't want to like waste a lot of space so that's the we like to like, have one OS pack and then we can uh, increment, incrementally add more things to this OS pack and combine with a hardware pack and generate an image. So it's quite uh, a storage efficient uh, this way. So at the end, uh, we, yes, we also look at propeller. It looked nice, but it was Haskell. Haskell is, has a bit of a barrier because not everyone is uh, co uh, comfortable hacking on Haskell. And then I think we also uh, look at the VM DB2. It was Python based, but it didn't fill the requirements very well. So what, why did it not fit the requirements? What uh, what specifically was missing? I don't remember very well, but I think we need um, we want to build without root. So we mm -hmm. we create a fake machine which uh, uses KVM to to build the image, so you see if you have uh, access to KVM, you don't need the uh, root access for to build the image. So at the end, we just uh, implemented the uh, this tool called DevOps to try to fulfill our requirement. So I think that's more or less. I, I don't think there was more. Oh, and also Pi. Look, look a bit, uh, uh, a bit complicated. Uh, the code base was a bit. I mean, it's been like growing organically, and it 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 look it didn't look easy to customize for needs that we had, like generating multiple images and so on. I had a talk about this two years ago in Heidelberg, and basically I think the main conclusion was that it's usually just easier to write your own tools and try to understand the existing <laughs> tools. And there's always a kind of a good feeling when you have your own tool that you have written exactly to the, your use case, while when you're working on someone else's code base, you have to like consider everyone else's use cases and you have to make compromises. Generally, I think it's not a very hard thing to write a, your own image writing tool. So that's why they appear so quickly. But then a few years down the line, you've collected more use cases, and then you're working on someone else's code. That's someone else being past you who didn't understand the problem as well. <laughs> um, I think if you should or if you want to select the tool you should think about do I only need to create images on the architecture that I'm running the tools on or is it possible to create cross architecture images or I think often creating the image or creating the change root environment so just the file system is, um, is, is nearly the same and I don't know if if all the tools support both. So if you want to have a disk image, you may, for debugging purpose, uh, without extracting the file system from the image, just do the same process to get just a file system for yeah, looking into it.
Does anyone else like to share their experiences with one of some of these tools? Is it on? Yeah. Um, I was using, I, I'm wanting a group to um, uh, start developing the kernel and I would like a tool to build a Debian image really quickly so we can use with uh, KVM to, to test the, the, the kernel. And I was using VM boots, the bootstrap for that, uh, but it had a bug and I sent, I filed the bug report in the, um, in the bug tracking system and somebody just replied me, oh, you probably should use another tool because the tool is kind of dead. Um, so yeah, that was my experience and I, I just want a simple tool to create an image with a simple command line. And you haven't found one yet? Yeah, the other ones seem complicated. I need to do configurations and things, things like that. Um, actually, I didn't really look uh, at the others, to be honest. I would be interested in if, if it's uh, important for people to have a tool that does not need uh, root, ex root for being run. So uh, currently, I don't know how to do rootback mounting or some other things, or are there already tools that do not need rule, uh, root, or which are the parts that still need root access? Probably you could look into uh, libguestfs to access uh, libguestfs. Have you looked into that? So that would be worth investigating. So actually, this is one thing I do know about a little, because I uh, started working on uh, uh, regression tests for initramfs init tools um, and try to get those working as uh, without root. Uh, and so far, I have got to, I can build an X2 uh, file system using uh, Gen X2 FS. Um, but I didn't find any way to uh, set up um, anything more complicated than that, like for uh, an X4 file system or LVM, um, uh, just using uh, disk images rather than devices. Does lib uh, does lib guestfs? Uh, what exactly does that do for you? So it's worth having a look at the docs for lib guestfs. It actually does really, really complicated, scary things underneath. Essentially, running um, a, running an emulator and running um, a machine inside a VM and then exporting access to basically to allow you to, to, to do the MuckNod call, which of course is the one you can't do any other way without being root. Okay. It, it, it runs a VM to so do it's, it. it you're, you're, you've got to have a certain kind of a file system proxy into... It, that's exactly how it works, yeah. yes. Okay. So, it, it then exp so it's, it's got bindings for most common languages. Um, I know in Linaro we use it a lot in Lava to help us uh, or allow us to then go and modify random file system images and add extra things into them after they've been built. Um, it's very powerful as I said, and also quite scary under the hood if you go and have a look. Um, but otherwise, you know, my experience is whenever we end up building images, and I've, you know, I've done a whole load of different types, it always ends up coming down to, can you run MuckNod? So that's why you end up by the building in a VM or, or something to get around that. I'm curious which of the tools mentioned can do bare metal installs as well, because I'd be interested in a system where you could create a 
virtual machine, a cloud image, uh, an ARM image, uh, and, and also install on bare metal. Yeah, say it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I know and I not for Thomas. Okay. So, Thomas Langer, Fai can do that. Um, my uh, script that is currently used for building the official Debian images can do it too. What, what else? Is there any other of the mentioned tools that can do bare metal? I don't think so. Well, Debian install with preceding. But that only does, yeah. I'm still using a send create image, uh, which has a simple uh, configuration. Uh, isn't uh, much being worked on, I think, and it doesn't support uh, IPv6. And uh, yeah, we've been uh, also on the verge of uh, creating uh, something of our own. Shall I scroll this down a little? People starting at the top. So, which of the tools can cross build? Uh, sorry, going back to the vagrant question on the installer parts, we are also looking into. Maybe calamares, it's something you can add into the image to get later being able to install this image into, into the device. Or there's also Ubiquiti from, I think, Canonical to be able to, to do the installation. Like you run a live image, you can install the bare metal hardware. So those are installers that we were currently also interested on that we as a collaborator. So I know it's interesting also to know if somebody else knows about installers. Um, another question, uh, is there one of these tools that already particularly cares about image reproducibility? Like making sure that if someone else builds the same, from the same git commit, they will get a bit by bit for bit identical artifact as a result? The, the problem is that you are writing an, on a file system and writing on, on X2, as much as I know, is not reproducible. Am, am I mistaking like that? Uh, Vagrant says, oh, I'm not sure. You have maybe like file maybe system. you want to answer that one, Vagrant? You have file system. How can you write on X234 X reproducibly? You can generate an exe this file system reproducibly without writing to it. I was just starting to say you, uh, the file system UUIDs and presumably partition UUIDs, if you use a GPT, are going to. Well, obviously, they're supposed to be unique every time. Um, and I don't know what's the, uh, I don't know whether there's a good way to override that. I think 
um, MKE2FS lets you specify a UUID, and you could you could derive the the value from the from something. Um, uh, but I don't know if if if, any, if anything does that. What what's going on uh, in what's the status of uh, tails uh, CD images? Uh, what we do at the moment, well, we use SquashFS, so we don't have any problem with X3234. And SquashFS reproducibility is now a solved problem, mostly. And to build our rep ISO images reproducibly, we, well, when you type rake build, we will build a uh, vagrant base box image with VM depot strap. This one won't be reproducible, but we don't care. And then, it will be started with backgrounds inside libvirt KVM, and then our bit system, which uses an old version of libvirt, will take over and in there produce a reproducible ISO image using snapshots of the Debian archive, so we control our input. What's the question about cross build again? Is about cross build. I think it's which tools do uh, can support uh, building a system image for another architecture. Okay, but De DevOps can build on AMD sixty four. I think it just uses AMD sixty four QMU, so you are forced to use that architecture as build architecture, and then you can. It's meant to to cross build images for any architecture you you want. Actually, we do it for, for ARM. Mm -hmm. I have a question on Calamaris. Isn't this a... Um, Installer with a user interface, or can it be run in a scripted mode? It depends on a bunch of GT stuff, so you can only run it as a GUI at the moment. No, uh, no script or backend. But there's a there's a session tomorrow for a few people who want to create something like Calamaris, but completely backend, so that you can build whatever front end you want to it. Does that answer your question? So just checking um, with GDisk for GPT partitioning, of course, where your UUIDs are normally randomized and um, partition creation time and whatever. Obviously, that will be a problem if you're going reproducible. Mm -hmm. you, it does let you specify your own UUIDs if you need. So, okay, so you can control that. Um, I've no idea about doing it for um, DOS partitioning. Um, Pass. I guess. I mean, a lot of that comes down to timestamps and stuff. To it, I believe. Partitions don't have IDs, do they? You're right. Good point. So then it will come down to the file systems you're using. Um, so yeah, X two three four. In theory, you should be able to do yes. it. Um, other file systems, uh, yeah, you get to keep the pieces. I added a question uh, at the bottom. Uh, it's uh, um, about updaters. Is someone also uh, using updaters besides APT? Nowadays, uh, we were looking into OS3 for atomic updates and also into CA Sync. It's, and I don't know if someone here is using this kind of uh, updating technologies. You mean updating your disk image? Yeah, I mean about like uh, on-field upgrades, 
So, for example, DevOps, we have support for OS3. Is uh, OS3, do you know? Mm, that's that okay. good. Uh, just a really quick uh, introduction. It, it'll be like Git, but for a, a root file system. So you just, uh, you have a file system in a server, and then you just git pull, OS3 pool, and then you just update from that, and you can roll back as well, and it's an atomic, atomic upgrade. And it, it deals, it, the file system is just some objects that need to be downloaded, and then you can update your, your system in field, is for infield up upgrades on for embedded devices. So uh, a so little bit like snapshots of the file system? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, in file, you could create a disk image with uh, ButterFS file system. So this would be uh, concerning package upgrades. I think most people would say uh, just rebuild a new disk image. So there's no special need if you have already a disk image to do an update or upgrade inside in it uh, because the build process is so fast, just rebuild a disk image. Yeah, and, and then you need to, like, I guess your use case is more into the cloud or uh, server, but if you have like in, internet of things, devices around and you need to deploy updates into these devices and there's failures you need okay. rollbacks and things like that. Yeah, as far as I know, most also embedded devices, you will always write the whole disk image onto it. Uh, or is anybody using some delta images or updates? So I only know that people uh, get a new version of, of a disk image and write the whole disk image to the embedded device. Well, uh, there are a lot of projects to manage this kind of updates for embedded with uh, AB type system partitions. Uh, it seems that Many projects are slowly standardizing on ROC, R A U C, to do that, and it has been it has gained C async support recently. I think. for you Ben you organized the session what were you hoping to to get out of this um, uh, just a conversation um, about the pros and cons and okay uh, cool I mean I honestly I mean there's already there's a wiki page mm -hmm. um, which hopefully should have links to all of these tools are you going to go through and update the links though and, and uh, I could do yes okay please Probably do because obviously it would be great to share what you know what people have been talking about <coughs> so it looks like that's people have said all they have to say uh, <coughs> any last points no? Okay then, let's, uh, let's stop there.